Hey everyone, it's Mark from The Wave Shop. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we like to edit drums. This isn't the only way to edit drums, but this is the way that we like to do it. So hopefully something in this video catches your eye and helps you in your process. Let me play a before and after of what we're going to edit, and then I'll show you how we do it. Here's before. and after. So let's dive right in. Let me start by saying that different styles require different amounts of editing. What I'm gonna show you today is editing to the click and getting really tight drums to that click. But some styles, it just doesn't make sense to do this. And it also depends on your drummer. Your drummer might be very tight to the click with his snare, but he might be intentionally loose with his kick, and that's where he gets his groove and his personality as a drummer. So you don't want to edit that away. The first thing I like to do is get an editable sound. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to be listening to these drums for a while now, so they might as well sound good. So I do a quick mix of them. As you can see, I've got a basic gate on the drums, and I've got some parallel compression going on for all of the drum microphones, just to kind of fatten them up. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our drums are in the same group so we can edit everything together. So I'm going to go over and select all of my drum tracks by clicking the top one, holding shift, clicking the bottom one. Then I hit command G, brings up the create group menu, and I'm going to keep it on edit and mix. Then you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. I usually do kit if I'm going to do every mic. And then as you can see over here, we've got drums and cymbals, which are two subgroups that I like to use. But all you need right now is the kit, which is everything that you use to record the drums. So you would hit OK, but I already have my group. So now you can see that whenever I click anywhere in the drums, it selects all of the microphones. So we're good to go here. So let's start by creating a playlist that we're going to edit on. As you can see here, I'm on the comp track, which is labeled .c. Now a comp track, for those of you who don't know, is basically the best parts of each take combined together to create the final drum part that you'll hear on the recording. So the drummer recorded on all of these numbered playlists. Here is full takes up at the top, and then some touch-up areas, and this was us just messing around. So once I have my composite track, I'm going to go over and duplicate my comp playlist because I don't want to edit on my composite playlist. I want to always be able to go back to it in case I do some bad editing. So I'm going to duplicate this playlist and label it .ce for comp edit. So you go up, duplicate, and then what you're going to do is rename everything with .ce. So I've already done this, so I'm just going to select that playlist. As you can see, everything is labeled .ce, so I know that I'm editing on the correct playlist. So let's get our tools ready for editing. We'll start by getting our grid set up. As you can see here, I've got bars and beats and minutes and seconds on my timeline. You can change that with this drop-down menu. So I have it selected on bars and beats. If you go up, you can turn your grid on and off by clicking on this grid. So I want it on, and then I want eighth note, just because it works with this song. That's the value that I want to edit to. So I've got my grid set up. I'm on slip mode because I want to be able to grab anywhere. If I was on grid, I'd only be able to grab chunks of the grid. So now we're going to set our nudge value. So we're going to go up to here where it says nudge. I go to minutes and seconds. And then as you can see right here, I've got three milliseconds. That's the value that I like to nudge at when I'm editing drums. Lastly, we want to make sure that we're using our smart tool. So I'm going to go up here. Right now I'm on the selector tool. But if you click this bar above it, it'll change to the smart tool. With your smart tool, if you're above the line, you can select below. You can grab. In the middle, at one of the ends, you can trim, and then you can always add crossfades. So it's a pretty cool tool, and that's what we'll use to edit. All right, enough of me talking. Let's edit some drums. Here we go, listening. So we could hear right off the bat that he was a little late, but he was consistently late. So that's actually a good thing for us, because I like to edit in bulk. And what I mean by that is, I'm not going to go in and edit every kick, snare, hi-hat to line it up to the grid. No, you might as well not even have a real drummer. But since he's a real drummer with a groove and a personality, we want to preserve that. 
So here we go. Let's do our first edit. So we've got a gap here. He's definitely late, but he's still late over here. So I'm just going to click and drag. Still late here. I'm just going to drag until he's back on the click. So he doesn't really get back on the click until this little kick hit right here. So I'm looking at my kick, my snare, and I'm looking at my hi-hat down here. A lot of people just edit kick and snare and they overlook important things like hi-hats and rides. So I've selected the part where he's consistently late and I'm gonna hit B, which separates that region. And so now I have my own little region here that's all late. So I'm gonna start nudging this and that's that three milliseconds that we decided upon earlier. The nudge button is the comma and the period. I can nudge forward with a period and back with a comma. So I'm going to nudge this back until he's right on the beat. And I'm going to check to make sure that that worked in other places too. Okay, so he's still a little off there. He's on the beat there. Looking at the hi-hat too. Okay, so we still have a few more edits to do in this section. But for the most part, that edit helped. So now I'm going to go back to the beginning and see, okay, we've got his hi-hats are on, this rim click is off, and the next hi-hat is off. So is that rim click. But he's on with this hi-hat right here. Actually down here, but it's coming through the snare. So I'm going to separate this region, nudge it back. All right, so now he's on the click there. Let's see, this first one, ooh, he's still late on this. It took him a while to get in the groove. So I'm going to split it here and select this region, the shortcut Option Shift Tab. Then I'm going to nudge that back. Now I want to make sure that these edits are pretty transparent. So what I'm going to do is get this to line up as close as I can to the start of that snare. And then over here, obviously I don't want to pull out here because then we're going to get two hi-hats. I'm going to pull back until right before that hi-hat. Now we just have one hi-hat that's on the click. So this rim click is on, that hi-hat is on, that hi-hat's on. Again, I'm going to pull this forward. If I pulled it back, we'd have an early hi-hat. So right before that hi-hat hits. That kick is on enough for me for this genre. If we wanted to move this rim click, I would select the region, hit B, nudge it over maybe once, and then pull back. Same goes with the snare when we're editing. If I pulled this way, we'd have two attacks on the snare. So I'm just going to pull back till right before that snare. So now we won't even hear that edit. So here's what we've done so far. Pretty solid. Right here, we actually moved this over too much. So you can see he's a little early now. So I'm actually going to just select until he's back on the click. So this hi-hat down here is still early. That click is early. And then he's late on that hi-hat. So I'm going to grab up to that hi-hat, separate the region, and just nudge it once over. Very minute, but it's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to center the left with the left arrow, zoom in on it, make sure I have a nice transparent edit. All right, here it gets a little funky. I'm going to split it, move it back here. So that hi-hat is a little closer. Split it again, move it back. There it is, it's on the grid. And this guy's early, so I'm going to select him, separate with B, nudge it back. And then I'm going to pull my regions until it's nice and, oop, that's not good. There we go. So let's hear what that section sounds like. Solid. So he's a little early here, early on this hi-hat, early on that one. So I'm going to just select here, hit B, shift tab, select the region ahead nudge it over just a little bit. That's close enough for me. He's a little early on this click and the hi-hat after that, so I guess I could move it. Pull back. Let's hear this section. 
So I heard a little pop there. I'm actually going to move this one back. But that pop should go away and we put our crossfades in at the end. All right, so you get the idea here. Let's listen to our section. Very solid. Here's what it used to be. So it's definitely a much tighter feel now. So when you're done with your edits, you're going to select all the regions and then hit Command F to apply our crossfades. And I do equal gain with about six milliseconds and I do pre-slice. So we'll hit OK. And now our crossfades are in. So lastly, I want to give you two tips that will help you in your editing. The first is don't be afraid to stray away from your comp playlist. So right here, if we're listening, this hit is not together. The hi-hat hits before that kick. So no matter how I edit this, I could either have the hi-hat on or the kick on. They're not going to be on together. And the last thing you want to do, you never want to do this. You never want to go out of your groups and just move that kick over. I highly discourage that. Some people do it, but you're going to run into phasing issues and issues with the bleed and the other microphones. So what I do in this situation when a hit is not together is I go through my old playlists and find a better performance. I'm not afraid to stray away from my comp playlist. It can save you a lot of time. So I already know that on playlist four, I have a better hit. That's nice together. So I'm going to grab this, hit C. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my comp. I'm going to paste it there and I'm going to paste it on my edit and then go ahead and edit that right in and I'm going to trim this up. Now let's hear it. Perfect. That's a solid hit as opposed to what we had before. So the tip is don't be afraid to go back through your playlists. You don't have to always stick to your comp playlist. This will actually save a lot of time in editing. And the second tip has to do with toms. So let me play this before editing. You can see that this last hit is definitely late and even this snare right here and here. But we can run into trouble here because of that tom hit. If we don't edit this correctly, we can get a pop in the tom microphone even after crossfades. So let me edit this fill real fast so you can see how I do it once again. And then you'll see what we do about the tom. So I'm going to start by grabbing this kick, hit B, move that over one. This guy's early, I'm going to hit B, move him over, make sure everything's trimmed up real nice. Go over here. So we've got our snare hits. Those are pretty much on. These two tom hits are on. That kick is good enough. But right here, these two snares and this kick, that's where we get in trouble. He's late. So I'm going to split it here and select this section and I'm going to move it over until those snare hits are on and that kick is close enough. So here's what it would sound like if we don't pay attention to the toms. I'm just soloing out the tom. You hear that pop right here. And that's because if we look closely we've really messed with the waveform there and if we even put a crossfade in we have a totally different shape to the waveform. So what I like to do is make sure that the lowest frequency of the tom is in phase throughout the edit. So what I'm going to do is move this whole section back until I've basically lined up with the waveform. You can see that if I pull it this way, I'm in phase with the lowest frequency of the tom. So I shouldn't have that click. And now I can apply my crossfade, and the waveform of the tom will look pretty similar to what it would be if we didn't even do this edit. We've just taken out a few cycles. So let's listen to see if we got rid of that pop. Good. Let's listen one more time. So that's how we do it. No pops and clicks. So now let's hear this edit all together. I'll put my crossfades in pre-slice. Sounds nice and tight to me with no clicks and pops. So lastly, once I have everything edited, I'm going to duplicate my comp edit playlist and name everything .cec. So now I have my comp playlist, my comp edit, and comp edited and consolidated. And I showed this in another tutorial about using playlists. 
but I'll do it again here. I'm going to select all my waveforms here, make sure my crossfades are there. Remember, this is all edited now. Now I'm going to use a command called consolidate clip. You can go up to edit, down to consolidate clip, or you can use the shortcut, which is shift option three. So that's going to render all of these edits together into one waveform for each track. So that's going to help because your computer won't have to process all those crossfades, and it also looks a lot cleaner. So there you have it, our edited drums all in one complete waveform for each track. Nice and clean, nice and tight to the grid. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can comment below or email us. We'll try to respond to as many as we can. We ask you to subscribe to our channel and like our video if this helped you out in some way. And be sure to visit our website where you can redeem your free mix and check out our engineering rates if you want us to edit your drums. Thanks so much. We really appreciate you watching our videos.